All right, guys, I just want to do a quick demonstration of the JM3 oil filter wrench product. These oil fil filter wrenches are a game changer for stuck oil filters. You really, really, really can't get out of there. So simple, such an easy, nice, uncomplicated design. The principle here is you lock in the handle and you only, see how I did that right there? You lock in the handle with your palm and only pull the eccentric, the center portion of it, right? So then what we're gonna do is, I ordered a, uh, this is a Motocraft kit, because I deal with 820s, 500s, 910s, FL400s, FL1. So I deal with all those. And then when you order the Motocraft kit, the standard Motocraft kit here is like 90 bucks, right? Or you can order each one individually. They give you a can opener, so you can slip this under can tabs and you just pop it up like that, or a bottle opener. You've got a bottle opener slot right here that you just kind of put over the bottles and you just pop them up. They pop right off. You can hang this from your key ring if you wanted to. Anyway, this we are changing the oil on a 2015 Ford F-150 3.5 liter EcoBoost. This is an FL500 standard filter made by Pure Later for Ford. Bypass is in the top of it. It's one of the better filters that is on the market uh, on the OE side. 99% efficient at 30 micron rating. Bypass in the top right here instead of in the bottom. Let's see here. Get you a little bit better view. This is the bypass right here in the top. See the two black O-rings? It's in between that and in, instead of in the bottom of the filter. So on cold starts, every filter will bypass without filtering until it starts to warm up and flow. That means all the sediment stays in the bottom of this filter instead of washing up through the center like a lot of the Wixes, the um, Frams, uh, any of the other Napa type or um, uh, Penn's oil type or whatever where you see the bypass in the bottom these are in the top so it's more likely to keep the debris on cold start in the bottom instead of actually washing it into the engine this filter fits this particular one here now again lock in the JM3 and move the handle side towards it's kind of hard to do it because on your finger side your fingers have a tendency to move so you'll go here pull it rotates the filter again let's demonstrate pull it rotates the filter let's get in here and take this filter off inside the truck he's working really good tight spots really good again i've got the jm3 on the bottom you don't want the line to move so i'm going to lock it in and i'm going to pull the top down well you could actually lock them both in if you want to just as a quick and go like that but if i ever got into a tight spot where i needed that that handle to be stationary I could push into it and just pull the bottom only. But in a situation like this, I can just use the actual whole tool. Let's go over here. I'm going to show you if I had something to push up against or I needed more of my palm and it was more stubborn than what it is. I'd go like this. And you see how that JM3 is up against that hose? And I move the handle into it. Now look at it. It's rotating the filter, especially one that's really stuck and it's giving you a hard time. And then just like so. What if I wanted to, let's take, let's continue taking this one off. We'll take this one off the rest of the way. Let it drain, put the new one on and I'll show you if you need just a little bit more snug, you can flip it the other way and snug them up too. The reason this is so nice is because there's no sharp edges in this. People tell me, people leave comments and stuff like, oh, wouldn't that like cut into the filter on the filter edges if it was really, really, really stubborn? No, he doesn't leave any real, real extremely sharp edges here. So it grabs the filter very nicely, right? at the corner just off the corner contact points and it's it's very nice it doesn't try to rip into the filter at all as some of you know these ecoboost trucks and or the f-150s where it has got the drop tray here it can be very messy so what i do when i go to do this is i'll crack the filter loose i'll leave it loose a little bit so it can drain appropriately instead of coming down this portion of it it'll stay in the back side and i'll just slowly go ahead and continue after I, after i cracked it loose like that Pull the filter back as much as possible. I know you guys have seen another video like this where I did the same thing while I'm demonstrating the tool now. So go ahead and pull this back. Just pull it back, pull it back, and then slowly tip it down. Let it drain out the back side. And there you go, you don't make a mess all over the front of the truck. And then you can just take the filter and finish dumping the rest of it out down here. It's nice and easy. That tray out, it stayed nice and dry up here in this front part where it always gets messy and leaks out the front. So then what I'll do, what I'll do while I'm here, is I'll go ahead and wipe this front part out, any kind of debris and stuff that may be in here. 
I let it continue draining out of the back. And then I'll go ahead and wipe this base and stuff off, make sure I don't have any kind of debris and stuff stuck on here. And once it's done draining, I'll put the new filter on. All right, we got our new filter on. We'll go ahead and clean it up as much as we can. We'll get a clean rag over here to dress it up the rest of the way once all the big residual stuff is gone. Finish cleaning our tray out back here, all the way to the back. Finger down the hole. I know, sounds dirty. But get your mind out of the gutter. Go ahead and wipe your tray out as much as you possibly can. No drips on the driveway. Then when you're done, get a clean rag, clean the filter off. So, clean rag, clean the filter off. Nice and shiny smooth. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use the tool. What if you're second guessing that you don't have it tight enough? This time we're gonna flip the JM3 away and it's gonna be on top. And we're gonna take our palm and we're gonna move the lower portion into our fingers like that. You just get another, I'm trying not to move my fingers. You guys get the idea though. So let's just pick, picture, I'm gonna lock my finger out on the bottom of this pulley and then I move the bottom lever into it. Now I've just snugged it up about another quarter turn and I've got that filter nice and tight and it ain't going anywhere. Let's go ahead and finish putting the oil and stuff in there and show you how to cold start this. Here's another tool that I use daily that I gave a huge shout out to last year and the company's been sold out for over a year. I love this funnel. It's got a strainer at the bottom of the base of it and it actually locks into the oil filter housing so it doesn't fall off while you're filling your vehicle up with oil. I really love this funnel. It's just peace of mind seeing the oil go in, seeing that nothing's making it through the funnel that may have dropped into the container, whatever it may be, the foil on the end of the core, you know, it's just really cool being able to see that nothing's going in that engine. All right, so this is a common question people ask me. They say, I have a push button start. How am I supposed to flood mode the vehicle if I don't have a key? The push button is the key. You have to think outside the box sometimes. So what we're gonna do, the dash is on, but the engine is not running. Push your accelerator pedal to the floor. Hold your brake down, hit your button. Crank, 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 crank. Let go of the gas. Oil pressure much faster that way. So I pre-primed the system. I flood moded the vehicle to build up as much oil pressure as possible. So when I let go of the accelerator, it would take it out of flood mode and start the vehicle. Push button and key. Now, the difference is with the push button, you have to have the accelerator down and the brake pressed. The key, you only have to have the accelerator pedal down. You don't have to have the brake pressed. That's the difference. Let's move on and check the oil level now. Let's go ahead and pull the dipstick. All right, the di dipstick is wiped off. Now let's stick it down the dipstick hole and pull it back out and check it. And at about three minutes of drain back time, we are right at the top of the hash marks right here. We are good, the system is full, and we are ready to reset the oil life. Back inside the vehicle, key on. And we will go over to settings. We will go down to I didn't go far enough. Here, advanced settings, and we'll go to vehicle, oil life reset, hold the button down, 100%. Now we'll change the sticker on the window, 55114. We'll change it to 6114, because we don't want no more than 5,000 miles on oil changes. Well, we got our oil change sticker in. Didn't realize I need to put the mileage that's on the vehicle, not what I want it to be, so I had to go back and change the sticker again to 6114 to match that, 5,000 miles. We're done. We're actually done. We're, we're done with all this. Oil has changed. I was able to demonstrate the JM3 for you, and this is uh, kind of a, something, it's a product that I really believe in. I really believe in it. It's a great product. I enjoy using it. And I just want to share it with you guys before it actually gets out on the market huge, and then it's really hard to get it. So... When you order the product, you're literally ordering it directly from him. This guy is so new with this product that people don't even carry it. It's coming from him himself. So, 
Y'all take care, be blessed, and check out JM3.